Hi there, this is part two of my scattering videos. Let's uh, take a look at the forest scene. I'm going to whip through this fairly quickly. If you want to see how I set these scenes up in a little more depth, watch my first video. I'll link in the description. Let me take you through what I've got here. So I've got two landscape objects. I've got the background one and the foreground one, and both of those have a displacement texture on them. Then I've got these two mega scans assets. I've got the catcher, the huge catcher underneath for any leaves that escape. And then I've got two emitters. So we're going to scatter some leaves and some branches. If you want to have a look at the settings I've got, because I've already set this up, you have a look here now. And for the branches. So yeah, just a whole bunch of leaves under that one and a whole bunch of sticks under that one. Now I could just go for it now, but like what we saw in that last video, what's going to happen is the leaves are going to get stuck underneath the displacement of this texture. If we have a look at it now, you'll see that what would happen is the leaves would end up falling below this displacement and so you wouldn't be able to see them. So what we need to do is we need to create a way that as the assets fall, they land on top of the displacement. So I'll show you how I achieve that. Come to our foreground landscape. Let's hold down control and duplicate that. Let's call the first one render and let's call the second one ref. Let's delete the material off the ref landscape. Let's come up to our modifiers menu and let's choose displacer. Drop it underneath the ref. Let's come down to the shading tab of the displacer. Let's change the shader to bitmap and let's choose the displacement texture of that landscape. And I know that it's this one here, this SMU. So click on there and you can see what's happening there straight away. Now you're going to need a little more resolution here. So click on the landscape object and let's change the width and depth to 500. And now you can see there's more detail being added there. The next thing you need to do is we need to line up this displaced geometry with the displacement that's happening on our landscape that's going to render. So the way we do that is just come down nice and low. Uh, one more thing, come back to the displacer and just come to the object tab. Let's set this to about 20 for a start. Okay, fire up the redshift render. Now what you need to do is you need to, making sure that the, the reference landscape is selected, you need to move it up and down until you start to see a close match over here. Sometimes it's easier to actually come to the t coordinates tab and just start playing with the Y axis. And it's a little bit of a dance to get it right. So you can spend ages trying to get this right and you end up basically going back and forth between all the different numbers between the height of the geometry displacer and the texture displacement over here. But just get it loosely right and then you'll be good. Okay, once you're happy that they are matching up, right click on the reference version and choose current state to object and that bakes in that displacement. So let's just turn off the one with the displacer, let's turn that displacement off. Let's rename the one we just created. Collider. Okay, great. We're nearly ready to run these emitters and hose the scene down with leaves and sticks. Let's just add our dynamics tags and our collider tags. Let's click on both of the emitters, right click, simulation, rigid body. Let's choose both the tags. Let's come to collision tab. Let's remove the bounce. Let's increase the friction. Let's choose both of our mega scans assets, our background landscape and our collider landscape. Right click, simulation collider body oh somewhere along the way the branch emitter there has just been spun around so i'll just put that back to where it was there we go okay so we're ready to run this now so let's click play okay we can see that that's going to do what we want so just click stop let's back it up to frame one let's choose both our dynamics tabs come across to cache and let's choose bake object okay great so that's baked out so let's just drag our timeline down and I've stopped moving there, so let's uh, select both of our emitters and right click, current state to object. Great, let's put our emitters in a group. Let's turn them off, drop that down below. Let's make sure that the collider object has render turned off. Okay, and we can delete both of those dynamics tabs there. Okay, great, let's jump into our camera. Let's have a look. Cool, so that's the effect we're after. So uh, one thing I did miss was I didn't put a collider tag on the catcher. I think we were okay in this scenario. I don't think actually much fell off the set, but if you've got a bigger simulation happening and stuff is flying off the set, you do want to have that catcher in place to catch any rogue things that are falling because otherwise they'll just keep falling and the computer has to keep calculating where they're at. Now, like I mentioned in the first video, if anyone does know how to use the destructor force, when you're using uh, dynamic objects within the emitters, uh, I'd love to know. Great, so this technique has endless possibilities for scattering natural assets around the scene, so uh, have fun.